Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 53 of the Modern Persian Food Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about a bright, beautiful, exotic Persian fruit, the pomegranate. Pomegranate is a lovely fruit that has gem-like arrows inside of it that are used in different Persian dishes and also just eaten raw and fresh and delicious. And I am here with Bita Jun. Hi, Bita Jun. What can you tell us about pomegranates? Well, they're the national fruit in Iran. It's a huge part of the culture in the foods, also just in literature, art. It's prevalent in many ways. It's beautiful and very Persian. Yeah. We have a special technique for opening pomegranates. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what they look like, they are, you know, round with this interesting stem on the top. And I think old school way of opening a pomegranate requires a lot of patience. What the fruit is, is it's basically tiny little seeds with the fruit around the seed. It's bursting with flavor and you can eat the seeds. The whole fruit is really nutritious. Once you've peeled them and removed the arils, you can eat them fresh and whole, filled with antioxidants and healthy fiber. My husband actually really prefers to sit there and pick them out. It's like therapeutic and relaxing to him. And our girls have grown to love kind of waiting for their little share of the fresh fruit. But over the years, I've discovered a way to open it with the underwater method. It's so fast and easy. And because I love them so much, when they're in season, I will open one like every day. You basically just submerge it in water, slice off the top and slice down the sides and you submerge it underwater. It's really easy way of grabbing the seeds out of that and then being able to use it in all sorts of foods. Do you enjoy fresh pomegranate? Yeah, I love fresh pomegranate. You know, that's really sweet that your daughters will wait for their dad to open up the pomegranate. I have actually similar feelings. You know, my dad would actually sit and do like six, seven pomegranates all at once. And so have a big fat bowl of it. And then you divide it amongst like whoever's there. And it's really special. I have really fond memories of my dad sitting there and seeding the pomegranate. It's round. It's beautiful. It has a hard leathery exterior and you usually need like a knife or something to pierce through that and to be able to like kind of pull it and break it apart i think your technique of doing it underwater is super convenient and it's actually much cleaner than the more traditional way which i actually still do more the traditional way is do it in the sink just to kind of cut down on the mess but i'll like score it and break it open into like four or five different segments and then individually break off each of the little arrow seeds into a bowl wearing an apron is a good idea you know having paper towels and things like that there to kind of absorb any splatter but yeah the color is this bright ruby red sometimes they get kind of darker like almost purple like in color or like more pale sometimes too but I feel the darker they are the more sweet that they are and I love just having like a bowl of fresh pomegranate I like to put salt on it some people put ground angelica seeds on it so golpar for like a little bit of added specialness to it. I love throwing them on salads. If I'm doing like a salad, I love the little like burst of flavor. And in some foods, you can use it as a garnish. We talked about fis and june before many times and we have actually a, an episode dedicated to fis and june but some people like to garnish the top of their fis and june with the fresh pomegranate arils and it's not super authentic but i think it looks really beautiful and it does add a little pop of flavor as you're eating this really delicious beautiful stew of ground walnuts and usually pomegranate molasses or paste and sometimes pomegranate juice cooked into that In Iran, they harvest many different varieties of pomegranates. And even in the U.S. now, I know my neighbor grows them, my mother-in-law grows them. And if you've ever gotten to be fortunate enough to be gifted a fresh pomegranate from a tree, if you wait until they're almost bursting, like you said, they have the segments. Mm -hmm. If they're like almost bursting, that's when they are 
so ripe and ready to eat. And then opening them and removing the arrows becomes that much easier. They almost fall out Uh and they're extra sweet and delicious. Oh, good point. They also look beautiful on top of jeweled rice. Oh, yes. Shirin polo, also known as jeweled rice. And that is the beautiful rice that has sometimes slivered carrots and beautiful dried fruit and orange peel, orange peel and the fabulous color and flavor of pomegranate also fresh looks beautiful on top and the taste of it is tartly sweet and interesting and it may not be traditional to put it but definitely adds a beautiful presentation and a nice kind of pop of tartly sweet flavor yeah that's beautiful so i know that dish sometimes people add zidish to it like the barberries and i think that that would actually be a great substitute for zidish if you want to kind of like flavor your rice or your dish with it that's a great idea to do. You can buy pomegranate, at least in this area, already Mm de-seeded in a container in the grocery stores. Just know that the shelf life is very short. needs to be consumed quickly. Once it's peeled, it does tend to go bad quickly. Yep. When I have it, I'll put it in everything. I'll put it in my cereal bowl or my oatmeal bowl and yogurt. Yeah, it's super delicious. Do you use pomegranate molasses or pomegranate paste? So pomegranate molasses is a little sweeter. And the pomegranate paste can have more of like a sour taste to it. The pomegranate paste I've really only seen in Persian markets, but the pomegranate molasses I've seen in different grocery stores as well. You know, we've talked about different appetizers or some easy recipes is actually using the pomegranate molasses on top of chicken wings. It gives a super unique flavor. And also just like on store-bought meatballs, you can add it for a fun little appetizer. You can just add the pomegranate syrup to it and you can garnish it with like some pistachio or some parsley and that's a fun Persian inspired appetizer so it's actually Mm. quite versatile I also like drizzle it over some my morning like yogurt and fruit Mm. those are really clever ways to use it I know that the very classic use for pomegranate molasses and syrup in Persian cuisine is in fesenjun and that is the stew which is made with walnuts and pomegranate molasses or syrup and either chicken or meatballs. So I love your modern, interesting versions of making appetizers and chicken wings and meatballs. And I've actually made the inspired pomegranate meatballs based on your idea. And so I love that. But Fesinjun is one of my favorite Persian stews. I have a modern recipe that I make in the instant pot. My grandma used to make it, and I know Bob's grandma used to make it, and it's just one of those things that when it's served, I'm so excited. I love the tartly sweet flavor. It's so rich and comforting. Do you have any old school Persian recipes that you use pomegranate in? Yeah, I mean, I think the main one is really fesenjun that I use it for. I know that there are some northern Iranian dishes that utilize pomegranate as well. We had Omid at the Caspian Chef on our show before, and he talked about pomegranates in a number of dishes. So it kind of ranges from what region you're from, different foods that you can put anor in. And anor is actually pomegranate in Farsi. There's actually another dish that I haven't made personally, but I really want to make it. I've had it a few times and it's super delicious is Asha Anar, which is an Anar hearty soup. And that is actually made with the pomegranates and pomegranate juice and also split peas are in there and a bunch of fresh herbs. And traditionally they're made with the tiny little meatballs. Make sure that those are properly seasoned so that there's like a great burst of flavor in the soup. And that's another type of way that you can use anar in your cooking. That's true. I haven't made it that osh either, but I have tasted it. It is delicious. This beautiful sacred blessed fruit is actually great for holidays. I use it as decor. I think it's beautiful and unique and I'll put it on a natural table setting in, you know, American Thanksgiving and over winter holidays. And let's not forget its important role in the longest, darkest night in the Persian holiday. You're referring to Shabi Yalda. Yes, Shabi Yalda. We talk about that in a previous episode. So can you tell us more about how pomegranate plays a role in that night? 
Yeah, so it's the winter fruit and the Shabrialdo, you have a little setting that has some of the fruits of winter time and pomegranates are definitely featured there. We also talk about pomegranates on the Sofre Mehregan. A few episodes ago, we talked about Mehregan and the pomegranate is featured there too. So really in the autumn and beginning of winter time where this great, beautiful gem-like fruit is fully ripened is where it's featured on some of these ceremonial place settings. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. We wanted you guys to all know about beautiful, delicious pomegranates and how we use that in Persian cooking. And our Asa Beats today comes from Kat at Simple Good Foods. And Kat says, I love my Instant Pot. Do you have one? And do you use it for Persian food? So you touched on it a little bit. I think you are our resident Instant Pot expert. <laughs> I know you use yours a lot. So tell me, what are some of the, your favorite Persian dishes to cook in the Instant Pot? You mentioned fis and julien, but what else do you use your Instant Pot for? Sure. Yeah, I love my Instant Pot. It cooks meat really quickly. It cuts down on the time. It's like an old school pressure cooker, but much easier. And this is going to sound silly, but I think the number one thing I make in my Instant Pot is hard boiled eggs. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to boil an egg or to make hard boiled eggs. But what's so wonderful about steaming them in an Instant Pot or cooking them down in an Instant Pot is that the peels just pop off. There's nothing more frustrating to me than to try to peel an egg and have it be difficult yeah. and sticky and make dents in it. And so you can quickly peel an egg after it's been cooked in an instant pot. You can also cook potatoes really quickly and both eggs and potatoes can be used in salad ulvia, Persian yes. potato salad. It is also wonderful to cook soups and stews. I have the extra large Instant Pot. They are rather large, but yes, great for soups and stews. And as you know, Persian food is a lot of stews. I think Fes and June that we talked about, I do cook in there. One thing you have to be careful of with Persian stews is lentils and yellow split peas. Because the Instant Pot gets hot so quickly, they can overcook and get mushy. So there's some strategies around that. You can actually saute in an Instant Pot, the onions and so on on the bottom. And you can cook the meat in it. And then depending on what kind of yellow split peas you have, you can actually, at the end of the pressure cooking, switch the setting on it, take off the lid, and then just kind of add the yellow split peas at the end, for example, so that they don't overcook. Do you have an Instant Pot, Pita Jun? I do have an Instant Pot, but to be honest with you, I actually don't use it very often. I don't have a lot of counter space, so it's on a shelf. And so breaking it out has to kind of like really be worthwhile for me to do that. But it serves a really great purpose of being able to use one pot to be able to quickly cook your food, specifically when it comes to like Persian meats and stews. Because a lot of time the meats need to cook so much that they're kind of like falling apart. The maicha in like bakala pula maicha, like a lamb shank and things like that cook really well in there because it does traditionally take a long time for them to cook and for it to become super luscious and soft. So I think that for that purpose, it's really great. Also, I think people who want to cook like beans too, beans from scratch, I think that's a great option. Yes, from dry. Mm -hmm. It's much faster. But yeah, I think that I just need to experiment a little bit more with it and see the potential of the Instant Pot in my life, but I haven't gotten there yet. Good. It's good for batch cooking any meats. As you said, it's wonderful for really cooking them down. And chicken, I like to sometimes just add a little bit of water. You can save the broth. After it's cooked, you can just use very like basic spices and then you can revolve it into many dishes. You can cook it from partially frozen too. So, you know, just time saving and oftentimes even make sort of like a shredded chicken out of it because it is just gets so soft. Yeah. So it's great. I hope you try it, B. Tajuna, and I hope we've inspired you to try the beautiful pomegranate and to incorporate it more into your table settings, your holidays and your Persian dishes. Yeah, great. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. 
We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. 